and we are live. Yay! <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Branch of Laurels. My name is Ashaxi, I'm from the Kingdom of Ontier, and I uh, do a weekly show here where we interview laurels from, I interview laurels from around the known world. And tonight our guest is uh, Magnifica Breck de Galeri. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the West Kingdom, but also from many kingdoms. Many kingdoms. So um, why don't you start us off with your story, how you found the SDA, and what made you fall in love with it? Oh, goodness. Um, I am, I'm a reader. Um, so I've always been in love with high fantasy stories, and especially the medieval time period. Um, and so many, many years ago, I was um, doing sort of a counselor and training thing up in Wisconsin. And one of the guys that was working there with us um, did, this was like for a summer camp, it was super fun. Um, one of the guys that was working with us did uh, rendezvous, which is the, the North, northern fur traders and french canadian stuff and he was like hey let's go do this thing and i'm like hey let's do the thing uh so we go and i'm like this is super cool these people are like reenacting a previous time period this would be perfect if it was the middle ages and he said have i got a deal for you there's lots of groups that do this and let's see if we can find one that's doing it while you're here and let's go check it out. And so we found, um, I don't know the name of the barony at the time. I don't think it exists anymore. Um, uh, it might've even been a Shire back then, but this was like in 91-ish. Um, and up in North Shield, wait, at the time it was Mid-Realm, um, the group out of Green Bay uh, did this little local event thing. And so we show up. I don't know anything that's happening. I'm totally confused the whole day, but I, I'm so excited and so happy and everything is so wonderful. I'm like, oh, I found my people. I have to do this. I was 16. So there's no, let me run off and go do the things because I'm 16 without a car up in Wisconsin. My parents are in Florida. So I finish out my summer at this counselor, camp counselor thing, go back down to Florida, finish high school, um, stuck in the back of the head. Medieval things are cool. Uh, join the Coast Guard, leave the Coast Guard. Um, then actually before that hurricane Andrew happens. So I lose all my friends from Florida. They all scatter to the winds. Um, join the Coast Guard, leave the Coast Guard and back in Key Largo. Okay, so we're talking so far south in Trimeris. I'm like further south than South Keep, technically South Keep, but like an hour south of South Keep, which is the southernmost shire in Trimeris. And so I'm at a club on Miami Beach or where it had moved to after Miami Beach died in the hurricane. So this is 92-ish, 92-ish, um, 93, 94, probably 95-ish. Okay. And I see all my friends from high school and I'm like, holy crap. You guys, where have you been? I haven't seen you. We all disappeared in the hurricane. It was crazy. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Oh, you have to come with us next weekend. We do this thing. It's medieval and we're going and we hit each other with sticks and we dress in crazy clothes. It's called the SCA. And I said, I love you. I'm so <laughs> glad we've met again. Let's go do the thing. I know exactly what you're talking about. They do that in Florida. So yes. Um, and go to my first Trimarian event. It's amazing. It's wonderful. I love it. It's everything I wanted it to be. It's starting to make a little more sense. Um, and just dove into the deep end. 
Wow. And the rest is history. But yeah, it was this sort of long convoluted and somewhere in there I went to England and went to an SCA demo at a castle in England and was even more starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there was lots of craziness, a slow path, took a couple of years, but I finally got here. Wow. Yeah, and, it's, um, it's been crazy. How, how long were you in Trimeris? Um, okay, let's do the path of travel. Uh, <laughs> I have lived in eight kingdoms. Um, so first event was mid-realm. Not sure we should count that, but okay, mid-realm. And then started in Trimeris in about 95-ish, 94-ish. I don't know, after the hurricane, I'm terrible with time. Um, and then we lived in Trimaris from then until my son was one. So met the husband. He's wonderful. Met him at an SCA event. Um, hey, yep. Uh, uh, let me see. We were married for a while. Son was one. Son was born in 2000. So 2001, we moved to North Shield to um, follow a job that my husband was doing. We get up there and I have to give so much credit to the Barony of Yarvetler in the Principality of North Shield right now because we showed up with the promise of a job. And we, I had left my previous job and thinking I was gonna get two more paychecks just because of the timing of things. And we get up there and those paychecks never materialized. And so we were ridiculously poor. I knew one person in um, Madison, Wisconsin. It was an old high school friend from Wisconsin. And, um, and we were like, oh, we have no money. We spent what we thought was our excess money on a down payment on an apartment. And we have this one-year-old and we have some canned food, but not a lot. <laughs> We're ridiculously poor. What do we do? We go to fighter practice because that's what you do when you're in the SCA, you're in a new place. Let's meet the locals because, hey, we have a family right here. We haven't met them yet, but we know who they are. And this story always makes me cry because it's amazing. Um, so we go to fighter practice, meet all these cool people. They're amazing. We love them all. And during the course of the evening, we, somebody had gotten out of us that we were right on the edge of ridiculously dirt poor. And they're like, well, we're gonna go out for like coffee or just little light snacky things after Friday practice, come with us. And we're like, we have no money. They're like, don't worry about it. We'll buy you a tea or something. We're like, okay, you guys are cool. We love you, right? So we go and when we leave this dinner event, um, we take the child out of his stroller and they had tucked $20 bills under my child. And I'm like, this is my new home. I love these people. And to this day, I absolutely love the Barony of Yard Rettler. They're amazing people. This is mundanely Madison, Wisconsin. Wonderful human beings. I highly recommend everybody uh, go there, visit, or if you are at a major war, go find the people from Yara Vettler because they're awesome. Um, so, so that was the barony of Yara Vettler, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I know. Uh, whoo, wonderful people. Um, we did fine, by the way. We made it through that. Jobs happened. Um, SCA has gotten me jobs. They got me a job there, which was cool. Uh, and then September 11th happened um which of course devastated everyone and my husband calls me from work and says hey I'm gonna be late coming home and knowing him as I do I said well tell the army recruiter I said yeah that's cool Aww. so <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is my life um <laughs> bring tissues um so he goes to the army recruiter at 33 years old. And they said, today's your lucky day. You could be a one-legged toothless nun and we would take you. And he said, good, 
because I'm 33 <laughs> and um, have been fighting SCA my whole life pretty much. So mostly broken, uh, but still game. So he signs up for the army, goes through boot camp, all those other things, um, and gets stationed in San Antonio, Texas for a year long school. Um, he did army medical stuff, um, research and cool, really super cool things. I'll geek out on that, but that's not what they're talking about. Today. Um, <laughs> my husband's amazing. Just going to throw that out there. Uh, so we go to Anstiora in the height of summer in San Antonio, Texas, Barony of Johannesburg. Right. Thank goodness for swamp coolers uh, and tile floors. I would just lay out on the, this is coming from Northern Wisconsin, well, central nor-ish Wisconsin. Yeah. You know, we leave in a snowstorm and go down to Southern Texas. Again, the Barony is a, a bunch of amazing people. We show up there, they are extraordinarily welcoming. They're like, oh, your army, that's super cool. We have lots of army here. Cause there's like army base, air force base, all of that right in San Antonio. Um, wonderful folks. They're amazing. We go to several events there. Um, uh, most notably, uh, I want to say like Patrick Michael's fifth coronation and there were giant storms. And so well, everybody's inside doing coronation. We're outside holding tents down. Um, <laughs> absolutely exciting. Uh, at some point there was, um, we had gone to like some tiny little championship event. And it was a pairing of heavy weapons fighters and light weapons fighters. And they all uh, would pair up and you had to win at the same time as your other guy. And um, so made a lifelong friend there, um, uh, Sir Liam from uh, Anstora and his now ex lady, but they were both amazingly wonderful folks that we met there. Um, but during this time, when we're living in San Antonio, I was, you know, a mom with a toddler who only wanted to watch Shrek all day long. Um, <laughs> couldn't pronounce it, so we'd yell, crack, crack, when the, <laughs> when the movie ended, so I had to put it back in. Um, and so for my birthday, my mother sent me a dress dummy, one of those old Joann's purple adjustable ones, because what else am I going to do? You know, so I wanted to really get better at sewing. And so I get this dress dummy and decide I'm going to learn how to fit clothing to a person. Because, you know, my husband's in class all day and the toddler's watching Shrek all day because I try and take him away from Shrek and play with constructive things. And he's like, crack, mommy, crack. <laughs> okay, crack. That's what you do with toddlers. You give them crack. Um, and so that was sort of the step, the next step in how am I going to make myself look the way I want to look and make my husband look the way he wants to look and make baby garb because baby garb is adorable. Uh, um, and then we moved for the second half of his schooling to uh, Hinesville, Georgia. So Meridier's. Um, and there was a very small group uh, that would come out that far. I'm pretty sure there was a larger amount of people in, um, in the Savannah area. I don't remember the name of the group there. Uh, we were only there for about six months again and close enough to Trimeris that we did a lot of weekends in Trimeris. Um, during that time, uh, some friends of mine, Yon, uh, Duke Moon, Yon Moon Yang and his uh, then wife, Iran, were raining. Uh, they were good friends of ours. So we would go down and do rain stuff with them. Uh, and then we got the big orders. You are done with school, moved to a new place. And we went up to uh, just north of DC to Frederick, Maryland. Um, and we lived in the Frederick, Maryland area, which is uh, barely of Highland Ford, I believe. Um, and tried to get housing and lived on base for a little while. Um, and then 
finally decided we don't like Frederick, Maryland. It's basically DC North. Uh, so we moved just over the Pennsylvania border and therefore just over the border of the East uh, to a little tiny little town up there just west of Gettysburg and lived there for about three years. Um, and again, you know, just slowly learning more, not actually having a teacher, but teaching myself based on I have a sewing machine and I have a basic knowledge and I have pictures. I can, I can get there from there. Right. Uh, and, and, and not a ton of in information on the internet yet. No, no, no. Um, at this point, I think I was still working on, I had a, um, a catalog called Alter Years for the Costumer that my mother had gotten me right when I first started the SCA. And I would, you know, dirt poor, army, one income. So I'd look at the little tiny pictures and try and make that thing. You know, when I was feeling splurgy and I actually had extra money, I might buy a pattern. Probably not. I would still look at the pictures and try and make the thing. Uh, internet was hard. Uh, I don't think we had internet um, probably until after we got out of the army. Um, maybe email occasionally, but I have to go to the library to do that. Um, and we lived there three years, two and a half years uh, until he got out of the army. Um, long, different story about how that happened. Uh, cool little group. Um, they hadn't had a Knights Marshal in I want to say like three or four years. And so my husband's like, I'm a Huckleberry. Uh, so we had some fighter practices in the area, did some demos in the area. At one point we did a demo and there were so many of my friends visiting me that we had more Trimarians at the demo than locals, <laughs> which was kind of cool. And this is in Pennsylvania. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and also we were kind of local-ish to Penzik. We were maybe three and a half, four hours away to Penzik. So that was super fun. Um, got to do Penzik every year we were there, uh, which was awesome and totally a hoot. And I highly recommend everybody does at least a Penzik because it's sort of like this Mecca that you have to visit just to see the awesomeness and the craziness that is Penzik. Totally uh, unique. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then... From there, we moved back to Florida. That was sort of our, our home. Trimaris was you know, where we had done most of our playing. Um, and that was 2005, I believe. Um, moved in with my husband's night uh, at the time. And um, yeah, moved back to Trimaris until 2011 when we moved out to the West. So my husband could go to um, grad school, which was fun. So did you have a sort of a mentor in Trimaris? I did. Um, I'm actually going to start. Can I start pictures? Because yeah, sure. my, my mentor in Trimaris is the coolest human being on the planet. Um, and uh, a couple of years ago when I got my Pelican, my, um, my Laurel, my mentor, my mom away from mom, I call her, uh, flew out to the West Kingdom to see me get my Pelican. And while she was here, uh, Esmeralda of the Lakes took this photo of her that is truly the most astounding thing I have ever seen. Wow. This is Mistress Barbara of the Crossroads. Um, she's super, super cool. I love her dearly. Uh, the, the goofy family photo on the other side is my, my crazy fealty family through Barb. Um, she conspired against me to have me her apprentice. Um, she and my husband conspired and said, yeah, you guys would be perfect. Um, the, your personalities fit you, you guys could really feed off each other and and you know my husband's like Brett could learn a lot from you um but I'm like no nah, you know this isn't I'm not really on a laurel path I'm just trying to learn the thing and 
And so she, in classic sneaky, sneaky barb way, I had asked her a question because I had this black walnut tree in the backyard of my house in Pennsylvania. And I'm like, oh, I could dye some fabric with those black walnuts. I have no idea how to do that, but you know what? I bet your barb knows. <laughs> so I, you know, ride my bike down to the library and get on the computer and I'm like, hey, I'm, I have this black walnut tree and it's super cool and I'd love to learn about dyeing. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll send you some information. I was like, cool, you're the best. And so about three weeks later, this big manila envelope shows up in the mail and it's because she's an old school Laurel, but how you research things is you photocopy stuff at the library. <laughs> and so there's this giant thick stack of photocopied information on period dye methods using walnuts. I was like, oh, best day ever. And so I slide all this stuff out of the envelope and at the very end, thunk, out drops a bronze apprentice medallion. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was sneaky <laughs> that was really sneaky um so what does an apprentice medallion look like I, i've never um hang on i can actually show you because it's right over here so she had gone to a laurel meeting and was talking to another friend of hers uh, mistress kashka uh from trimeris who does lost wax carving and you know, they had sort of been talking about ideas and while Barb was in the Laurel meeting, she came back out at the end of it and Kasha shows her a carved wax and says, you mean something like this? And wow. it's this, let's see if I can show you here. It's this perfect little thing. Now minus the Laurel wreath is my apprentice medallion. So this little thing goes kathunk out of this envelope. And that's her device, the, the rose with the golden fleece on it. Um, so I'm stuck at this point, you know, because who says no to Barb, really? Uh, and if her internet is working, she's probably giggling right now because she knows nobody says no to Barb, she's mom. Um, and she wanted to make me her apprentice while I was still pregnant with my son, um, but the timing never worked out. Um, so she had to make do with just belting me as opposed to belting both of us, which, because she's <laughs> she thinks she's funny. Um, and so the, the rest of these clowns over here um, in the bright red dress is my apprentice sister, Signe, and you can see she's wearing her apprentice medallion. Um, she is now Laurel. She was Laurel in Trimeris and now lives in Atlantia. Um, not shown is my other apprentice sister, Faye Trees. She um, uh, was Laurel in Atlantia. They both live in Atlantia now. Uh, the, the goofball <laughs> with the red hat, that is my brother, Talabi. Um, so Signe was Laurel for um, uh, Scandinavian awesomeness, like persona development and the whole nine yards. Um, uh, Talabi was laureled for uh, lapidary work. He does some amazing work um, carving gemstones and polishing things. Um, then there's me way back in the day. Uh, and then my other apprentice sister, Carmenetta, who, uh, Countess Carmenetta, who has not been laureled yet. Um, but if she were to be, it would be for um, homesteading stuff. Um, and honestly, probably animal husbandry too, only not the weird kind. Um, she's awesome. And the queen responsible for Gulf Wars. Uh, so she oh, wow. and her king, um, way back when they did reign, um, sort of set the groundwork for making Gulf Wars happen. So she will always be my hero for that because that's my favorite war ever. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's my crazy family. Very cool. Can you look at the rest of your pictures? Yeah. Let me see if I know how to make this thing. There we go. Um, so then 
when we found out in 2011, early 2011, that we were going to move out to the West Kingdom, I had um, been introduced to Duchess Mari and she of the, I know all the German things and did all the German research. Um, she had been my hero for a long time, sent me discs of German research so I could do German research without having to deal with craziness. Um, we had met at Gulf Wars. Uh, so when we found out we were moving out there, uh, Barb went up to Mari and said, hey, do you mind fostering Breck? You know, she's extraordinarily burned out, um, frustrated with all the things. And I think she just wants to get back and, and learn all of the German stuff and learn her skill and learn her craft and, and get back into it. But I think you're the right person to move her forward. Um, and so, Mari graciously took on <laughs> me gesturing to all of me um, and was amazing. Um, she was absolutely wonderful, everything I needed in a peer at the time. Um, and definitely a, a welcoming, welcoming presence in our visit and since moving out to the West. Um, my first Western event was well before we knew we were going to move out here and it was because Mari was queen and said hey I'm holding this thing it's called Provadura it's really awesome you should come and so you know we flew out to this event all crazy like and she was right it was awesome glad we went um and just sort of started that stars in my eyes about the West Kingdom thing it was amazing uh but then she moved to Locock and so the fabulous couple on the other side of that photo is um, Sir Zaid. Her, she, he was her man at arts, um, but he is also a all the peer now. Uh, and then his lady uh, Donna, who is truly a, a, a delightful human being. Um, I was foistered upon Zaid, I like to say. So I was fostered to Mari and then foistered upon Zaid. Mari basically said, Zaid, you're still in kingdom. Here's the kids. Oh. Um, <laughs> and so he took on myself, um, my, uh, my sister, Mistress Anya, um, my absolutely crazy sister, Helga, um, and our, our lady at arts sister, uh, Haley, and basically took us all in with a grin and said, y'all are family, so I'm in charge. And we said, you're the <laughs> boss, let's do this. Awesome. Yeah, um, truly, truly amazing folks. Uh, but since we're talking about me, yeah, <laughs> I made Mari's dress. Um, that was for her reign with uh, Master Brock as princess when she won princess by her own hand in Sanagua. Um, and then I had made this under for Zaid um, when he got his pelican. And then when he got laureled, um, Anya did all the embroidery around the cloud collar. Uh, Haley did the laurel wreath painting on the lining. And then I did all the construction and design and putting together of the coat for his laureling. So that's his laurel coat that we had all put together. And that thing's got like real emeralds and rubies and, and crazy, crazy gems on it. It's, wow. it's truly astounding. Um, and then I made uh, Louise Donna the matching outfit for her. So yeah, we had a super good time with that. I love collaboration projects. Like this one was a collaboration between me and Mari and somebody, I, I want to say Neva did like, or Helga, one of the two of them did like miles of this crazy velveteen trim that we made for that. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, so yeah, my laureling, uh, that happened at Gulf Wars, um, which was super cool. It was really amazing. The, the crown of the West at the time, Roger and Zenobia, you know, Zenobia loves Gulf Wars and she knows I love Gulf Wars. And she said, you know, I just, I really wanted the timing to work out so that we could do this at Gulf Wars. Um, and so like literally during the announcement, she, she said, 
I know you're really busy this golf wars, but here's another thing. <laughs> um, so, so it was really cool. You know, we did it right after our opening ceremonies, um, right out in front of the fort and it was just amazing. And my sister Haley, who does beautiful, beautiful artwork, um, she made me this really cool banner, which is the one actually hanging really tall behind me. Oh. She had snuck into my sewing studio at the time and took pictures of the dress I was making for my laureling so that she could put the same dress on the banner. Um, she was just going to have one bunny on the bottom, but apparently bunnies do what they do. And so all of a sudden there's like a whole family of bunnies on the bottom of this banner. It was super awesome. Um, but that was cool because I was able to have, because we did it at Gulf Wars, I was able to have speakers from um, the three main kingdoms that, that I truly felt at home in. I had West Kingdom speakers, I had Tremarian speakers, I had Anstiaran speakers. It was truly amazing. It was wonderful. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. You look fabulous. It was great. It was absolutely great. So um, Anya in the green here, uh, I made her this fabulous collar for her laureling because I decided I'm never going to get laureled. So I'm going to make her the collar that I would have made for myself. And uh, <laughs> absolutely love that collar. It's amazing. And um, thank goodness she's the crazy girl that she is. Her entire house was burning down in the campfire and she grabbed that oh. and like six other things. But I'm like, really? I can remake that. She goes, no, no, you made it. I had to say that. So um, she's awesome. Uh, my sister Helga, Anya and I were all um, elevated to the peerage within six months of each other. Wow. It was like, Mari left to Australia. The West Kingdom went, Ugh. <laughs> oh, and then she's got kids. Let's make them peers. Uh, so um, I think it went, Helga got the Pelican at I want to say Great Western War, and then Anya got her laurel at the October um, Sanaguan Coronet right after that, and then I got the laurel uh, at Gulf Wars. So just boom, boom, boom. So we all got these cool matching medallions, which is super awesome. Um, but it also meant that I got to talk Anya and Zaid into coming out to Gulf Wars with me. So my two fealty families got to meet, which was awesome and so happy about that. So this is Anya and Signe deciding, you know what, they're family too, which is what I absolutely love about the SCA is, you know, we all know we're family. We just haven't met yet. Let me see. Oh yeah. Early garb. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, so me and the straw hat that was probably man probably somewhere around 2001 maybe maybe 2002 um long long time ago i had made this sort of odd bleo looking thing very 12th century i absolutely loved that dress um I think I ended up giving it to uh, Duchess Elena of Newham um, when she was queen because we were at Penzik one day and I made the mistake of getting dressed up in a really nice dress because I was escorting the queen and she shows up in like this ratty tea tunic and looks at me and I'm like, oh, I have <laughs> dressed the queen. I am a bad person. Um, and I was like, oh, there's only one thing I can do here. This is yours now. Um, and it looked fabulous on her and she was absolutely wonderful and gracious and she would never ever have said how dare you over outdress the queen. Um, in fact, she's probably if she's even listening I don't even know if she plays anymore she's probably like, I would never what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's how my brain works. <laughs> um, I will talk myself out of garb. It's, it's really funny. Um, and then that was my first German, my absolute very first German looking. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, a friend of mine up in the East Kingdom, that's by the way, my backyard in Pennsylvania. 
um, my, a friend of mine in the East Kingdom had hand sewn this beautiful Saxon Cranach type gown, um, you know, silk and linen and, and, and gems and embroidery. It was beautiful. And she had entered it in an art site and apparently they were mean to her. Oh. I wasn't at the art site. I have no idea if they were mean to her or not, but she told me they were mean to her. So I got all been out of shape on her behalf and decided I can make one. I'm going to make one. Um, so I made this dress, I want to say in the July before Penzik. So tried to figure out the research, tried to figure out the patterning, had no idea what I was doing, made everything up as I went along. Cause you know, this is 2003 or 2004 in Pennsylvania. So no money, no internet. I could go to the library. I had my picture book um, <laughs> and not much else. And so I made this dress and I was like, I'm making a dress and we're gonna wear them at Penzik and we're gonna walk around at Midnight Madness and we're gonna look fabulous. And we did awesome. until it rained. And I found out that a fully wool Saxon gown when soaking wet from the Pennsylvania deluge weighs about 300 pounds. <laughs> and have since made some different design choices. Um, I wanna say that there's five or six layers to those skirts, cause that's a dress and underdress um, and both skirts on the dress and underdress are lined. And then there's all the guarding on the outside and it's all wool. Yeah, it got really heavy, um, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about construction in this cause this was the most constructed um, outfit I had made yet. Um, up until then, I was making, you know, four panel coat hardies. I was occasionally making the, these bleo looking tea tunic things, um, but not really constructing things. I had learned a lot about fitting from doing the coat hardies, but not this, this later period heavily constructed concept. So, and learned a lot and decided, man, Germans are cool. I want to do a lot of that. Awesome. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, the Penzik, I loved it. Was this the Penzik you ran into Mari at? Um, I ran into Mari at a Gulf Wars. Oh, um, Gulf Wars. Yeah. And uh, so I had known her night for a while, and he had talked her into coming to Gulf Wars. And so I'm down at Marshall's Point because I try to keep that area in line at Gulf Wars as best I can. Um, and so I'm down there doing my marshalling thing and he comes walking up and he's like, hey, I wanted you to meet my squire, Mari. You guys would really get along. Oh, hang on. This was probably a really bad idea. And then he walks away. And so Mari and I are like, hi, how you doing? We're best friends now. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much how it went. We really got along great. Um, we, we have the same kind of ideas about how we do things. Um, so it, it's, it worked really well for us. It was a, a great introduction. Thanks, sir. Um, and, and it's been awesome ever since. But one of the things that she did after that first meeting was um, she sent me two CD-ROMs no kidding, like in the mail, sent me two CD-ROMs of um, her German class that she gives. It's like a two-day seminar on how to do men's and women's German stuff. And she's updated it a gazillion times since then. But in the early 2000s, this was huge. Wow. You know, I, I didn't have this information available on internet. Web gallery of art didn't exist yet. So I didn't have these images anywhere. Um, so it was just, it was amazing. Just these, these two discs and, you know, a couple of wars here and there, and maybe an email conversation back and forth took my, my understanding of German garb from here to like way up there. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely amazing. G great help. I learned a lot from her. Um, as you can see, so this would be my second German. Uh, there's a painting. This is uh, one of the Bruegels, uh, this is St. John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness. The, and this image of this laurel or this um, 
uh, truss frau, kemp frau, whatever you want to call her, is maybe this big down in the bottom corner of the painting, but she's got this beautifully, um, like, I, I don't think it's smocked. It's almost like it's a cartridge pleated around a collar uh, shirt. She's got these fabulous skirts and then she's got these amazing sleeves. And yes, this is a terrible photo. This is what I had. Like I said, web gallery of art didn't exist at this time. I couldn't get high res photos of this picture. All I had was this sort of sketchy, odd colored, pixelated, dim, blurry. I have no idea what I'm looking, looking at, but I'm like, I'm making that dress. And so from that, I came up with this idea. Um, this is me and my son at Gulf Wars 2005 or six. I don't know, he's we in this picture and he's like 21 now. Um, and there are 285 individual pieces of fabric in each one of those sleeves. Wow. Yeah. And I hand stitched those suckers because there was, I hadn't figured out how to put it together by machine yet. Hadn't figured out anything, but I'm like, I'm going to make these. <laughs> and so I did, you know, I'd sit that demos and just, I'm going to put these together. Um, and again, learned a lot. You know, now I make things a little differently, um, but essentially that same concept is still there. Uh, I think that, that that fearlessness that I'm gonna just jump off the cliff and make this happen is yeah. really, really important when you're- It is, it is. Stuff. And I did tons of that. I mean, I'd be like, I saw a picture, I'm gonna make the thing. Um, and just because there was nobody there to tell me Oh, you're not good enough for that yet or you need to learn this first before you can get there uh there was nobody to tell me those things it was just me and whatever pictures i saw trying to come up with how did that get put together i have no idea well let me let me make one and find out <laughs> and so i learned so much stuff just by well, let me make one and find out um and i i love this photo of me and my son just because He's such a hoot and, you know, just the goofiest of goofy humans. I have so many stories about him that he's like in my kitchen right now, probably going, oh God, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're, I mean, so many stories. Like there, this one time at Penzik, yes, I will start the stories like this. This one time at Penzik when my toddler was potty training and uh, went to every porta potty and then decided later that night after we had put him to bed um, and we we're getting our camp cleaned up. We we're having a royal dinner. We were invited, uh, Trimeris had invited like Mid Realm and one other kingdom down to Trimeris because Penzik for Trimeris is where you get your allies for Gulf Wars. So wow. you wine and dine all the people, right? And so that night we were whining and dining Mid Realm and somebody else. And uh, so we closed the, the Trimerian gates. They have these big wooden gates. It's super cool. And I put Jake to bed. And uh, so we're cleaning up the camp and setting up torches, setting tables. And, and we're like, man, you know, Mid-Realm should have been here by now. I wonder what's going on. And so we, we hear up sort of halfway up the road, we by Ethelmark because you know Ethelmark and Tremere should camp next to each other at Penzik, which is awesome. Um, we see this or Eldermere, sorry, the Canadians and the Floridians they camp together. Um, this little head sort of sticking over the corner of the wall, and they're like, "Um, excuse me, uh, the gate guard will not let us in." <laughs> like, oh, did you post a gate guard? No. Did did you post a gate guard? Nobody posted a gate guard. So we all run over to the gate. We open the gate and there's this two-year-old in a diaper, nothing else, holding a glaive, like full-size SCA glaive, holding off the royal party of the mid-realm. Oh no. <laughs> and His Majesty Felix is like, your gate guard is very fearsome and will not let us in. And we're like, <laughs> Yes, your Majesty, sorry. So yeah, put the kid to bed. So 
when my son was in boot camp and again, King Felix came out to the West Kingdom um, for one of our crown tourneys. I mentioned that story to him again. He's like, oh my God, I totally remember that. So yeah, I, I will embarrass my child a gazillion different times. Um, <laughs> there are so many awesome, raise your kids in the SCA, seriously. There are so many awesome stories uh, from raising that child in the SCA, like him standing on a table and screaming at the king of the, we're living in Tremeris, I've never met this guy before. And he's screaming at the king of the West while he's standing on a table saying, you need to fight for the blue side. The blue side is better. The yellow side, you don't want to fight for them. And so the king of the West is like, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's a good argument. And goes and gets his entire army and has them switch sides. <laughs> And now that King of the West is my brother married to my sister Helga. So that's how I met Hansa. <laughs> so yeah, uh, raise your kids in the SCA, seriously. Awesome. It's, it's totally worth it. Um, let me see, where are we? Pictures. Yay, Germans. Um, I think uh, green's my favorite color, just throwing that out there. Um, I just I love Germans so much. They're so much fun. Either the the super regal Saxons or the the super fun Kampfrau Trostfrau concept. Um, it's fun clothes. It's fun to wear. Um, they're big personality clothes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love them. Uh, the the darker photo was taken by my friend Tara down in down in Trimera. She was like, I want to do a photo shoot, and I was. I have garb here. Um, so we did super fun ones. Um, and then I, I stuck at taking photos of my own garb. So I make friends with photographers. Uh, and so the other photo is taken by my friend, uh, Master Ursus out of Atlantia. I think he's in the East Kingdom now. Awesome photographer. He does a lot of East Coast stuff and wars and things. Uh, truly an amazing human being. Um, those are my first German shoes. I had found this pair of red Mary Janes at Goodwill and like cut the toes out so that they would be those really narrow toes from the German shoes. Perfect. And I wore those literally until the soles fell off. That's and then I'm like, all right, I should actually get some new shoes. <laughs> Such fun. And that dress I made like during a Packer game just because I needed a green and gold dress. I didn't have one and the Packers were playing. I was like, that's a good reason. Yes. How I roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my husband, by the way. He's super handsome. I absolutely adore him. Um, Master William of Effingham. Um, I made him take goofy pictures because I was doing a, a pattern test for, I don't remember who it was for for that hood, but um, they, they wanted a bunch of folks to test their pattern. So I tested it and I told them my ideas and I was like, yeah, too much fabric in the back, but everything else is perfect. Um, and then me and my kid got his AOA super young. He was seven wow. when he got his AOA um, and probably just for having the King of the West change sides because our crown was super impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, he's a he is just a, a hoot and and super sweet. And that that hood that he's wearing, um, awesome story about that. I had completely hand sewn that. It was my first fully hand sewn project. Uh, I don't even know how old that thing is now. Um, but the kid wearing it, like I said, is now 21, and it was old when he took that photo in it. Wow. Um, I had entered it in our arts and sciences competition in Trimaris, and the the Eastern Kingdom's arts and sciences competitions are much more structured uh, than they are out here. Um, and so I had entered it in one and it was chosen to go to Gulf Wars as a champion. Um, and so it was at the, the Gulf Wars champion thing. And one of the judges, it was the craziest thing. She was, she was testing, I don't know if she was like testing how I put the buttons on, but she literally pulled one of the buttons off and then just sat it next to the hood. Oh. <laughs> and one of the other laurels came up to me after and she was like, oh my God, was that your hood? That lady pulled a button off. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so that's how we're gonna roll. All right, no problem. I can put that back on. Um, <laughs> all right. <Thanks. laughs> yeah. 
thanks for leaving it there and not taking it with you. Um, so it was very strange. Uh, it was a very weird thing. Um, okay, so Thor and Zeph. Um, I really had to start stepping up my game when these two clown shoes, um, I mean, fabulous individuals that I adore dearly, uh, they're clown shoes because I love them. Um, they won crown uh, for their first time in Trimeris. Uh, we were back living in Trimeris at the time. We had been back maybe a year or two. Um, and they came to me and they said, we want you to be our head of court. And I said, all right, I can do that. Never done that before, but I've served on plenty of courts. I can do that. And then they said, and we also need clothes. Can you do that too? And I said, sure. All right. What kind of rainy you're going to have? They're like, we want 14th century French and we want it all matchy matchy. And I said, okay, I can do that. 14th century French. I have that skill. Let's do this. I have sewn more triscales on garb. Um, at one point I wanted I, like the, the outfits that they're wearing with the triscales on the, the hems where they're handing out an award. Um, I had originally put those on backwards and technically there's no direction to a triscale, but they're supposed to be sort of swirling forward. Um, and as a joke, Thorsten points it out to me that it's upside or it's backwards. And so I literally took them all off and put them back on again after they had worn them at Penzik, by the way. Wow. Uh, yeah, because that's how my brain works. Um, and so I, for their first reign, 14th century cent French, I want to say I made them six sets of matching code hardies for the wow. one. Now these are Tremarian reigns. So they're four months as prince and princess and six months as crown. Lots of events. So we made lots of clothes. It was fabulous. It was fun. Um, then they took a rain off and I think I skipped one in here or I got the slides backwards, but they took a rain off and they did uh, another rain right away. So it's like, we're raining, we're down, we're, we're raining again. And they said, hey, this time we want to do, and I think their second one was Germans. They're like, we want to do Germans. I said, oh, I'm your Huckleberry for that one. I can't be at a court and do Germans at the same time. Um, so they're like, yeah, but you're still in our court, right? Yeah, I'll still be on your court. So we had this great team that we had developed um, during their first reign. It was me and Mr. Salasoon and my apprentice sister, Signe, um, our friend Lily, who was the wife of Thorsten Squires, uh, Santiago. Um, that was sort of the core group. And we stuck together through all of their reigns. It was crazy. And just an amazing, amazing group of people. Um, so... And then this was their third reign where they were like, we want to do early period. So like 12th century flowy bleos and tunics. And I was like, I'm real Cabrera, I can do that too. <laughs> so did a lot of those things. Um, this is actually their wedding picture in the blue. And they had gotten married at Gulf Wars, um, as you do, because craziness happens. Um, and I think, yeah, for that one, I had made another bleo crazy thing. Um, there's my sister right behind me. She's so pretty. That's Signe, who does everything perfectly. It's just amazing. Uh, this was probably Penzik opening ceremonies because we all look exhausted and hot. So <laughs> that's usually how that works. Um, I think I gave this dress to my boss's, like my mundane boss's wife, because she wanted to go to an, uh, a medieval fair or something like that. Gainesville does medieval fairs, uh, Barony Van Crosser and Trimaris. Um, so she wanted to go, so she wanted to dress, and I was like, I got one. Um, that was a, a fun thing. All right, and then there was, this was their second reign, I believe. They did Germans. So this was my first sort of perfect theater in the SCA moment. It was so amazing. Um, so they did this crazy three outfit change, Holy Roman Empire coronation thing. Um, out West here, everything is scripted. 
in the Eastern kingdoms, they don't script everything as strictly as we do. So you basically get to write your entire own coronation ceremony, however you want. And so they, you know, they started out in the 14th century French, stripped down to their underwear, then went to a Romanesque kind of concept. And then in two minutes, we brought them behind the thrones, dressed them in full high Saxon Germans, and then literally two minutes later, they step back out in front of the thrones and the whole crowd goes, oh. wow. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like exhausted at this point because I have three costume changes, you know, you're basically a stage hand at that point. And you hear that gasp intake of breath and you're like, I did the right thing. Yes. I, I, I made this happen. It was super cool. Sorry, I just had a cat run through the room and do the crazy eyes. So. <laughs> as long as he didn't like crawl up your back, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, he chose a chair across the room. From Steve. <laughs> Whew, crazy kitty. Uh, so, and for, for this rain, I want to say I did four sets of Germans for them. Wow. Uh, the yellow ones, I did a, like a lighter weight uh, sort of, uh, run around the field kind of Germans. I, I want to say I've made Zeph like six or seven little Waffenrocks to fight in. Um, so much stuff for these two. Uh, they're absolutely amazing folks. Um, they're not together anymore. They've both actually gone on and reigned with other folks, um, but, but still two of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Um, this was a full velvet set of Germans that I had made for them for Gulf Wars opening ceremonies. And there is an ongoing battle between myself and Thorsten because he says these are black. And as the seamstress, I like to remind him that they are green, <laughs> but it's one of those greens that's so dark that in the wrong light, it looks black. Um, and uh, my, that's my kid standing there in the crazy pants and the crazy hat. Uh, I was testing out the concept of making uh, leather German pants. And since I'm, I was still extraordinarily poor at that time, how do you do that? You do it for your seven or eight year old child. Um, so by the time that day ended, he looked like a seasoned Lance Connect warrior, right? So like, one pant leg was ripped in half and hanging down by his ankle. The other one had big splashes all the way through it, you know, shirt hanging half out and he comes staggering back over to camp. And I'm like, Jeff fun. He goes, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> all right, dude, <laughs> you go on with yourself. <laughs> um, this Gulf Wars opening ceremonies, which uh, if you have never been to Gulf Wars, I would recommend it to everyone. Uh, their opening ceremonies is amazing. All the crowns ride horses in procession mm -hmm. um, and then get off the horses behind the castle and come out. It's a big to-do. Super exciting. Um, I absolutely love Gulf Wars. It's my home away from home. I have never been. You should absolutely go. It is super cool. Let's see if I can make these change. There's the punk kid again. Oh, wow. Yep, I decided he needed actual period German clothes, so I copied this little dude. Um, he was not having the picture taken that day. Oh. I want to say this was at the um, <laughs> the the Renaissance Fair, the Northern California Renaissance Fair. Uh, he was just like, "Mom, what the heck?" <laughs> but you know, there are kids. We live to torture them. Um, this is sort of one of those, let me dive in and see if I can do proof of concept for kids clothes. Uh, it turned out pretty good. I was, I was pretty pleased. We ended up, uh, donating this one to, uh, one of our land fund, uh, fundraisers. And so hopefully it's still being passed down from kid to kid here in the kingdom. <laughs> so it's super, super cool stuff. Um, so this is Zephrine's fourth reign. Um, she did with uh, Joshua Le Charmant, I want to say it's his, his SCA name. Um, and so again, they were like, let's do 14th century French. And I was like, oh, thank God, those are easy. <laughs> um, so um, 
these, the, the blue ones, the dark blue ones are um, silk that I had, um, those are computer embroidered because I don't have that kind of time and I wasn't gonna make my, my outsource sister of awesomeness, Anya, do the hand embroidery of all over embroidered triscales. <laughs> um, so I digitized this little triscale pattern and embroidered those suckers. Um, they're beautiful. They are so beautiful. I don't know how they wore them at Penzik because they're, um, because of the silk, I wanted them to be a little bit more substantial. So I fully lined them in a lightweight linen. So they're, they're pretty stout. Toasty, yeah. um, that, that silk in the sun is just stunning. It's just beautiful. Um, and then, you know, for more rational climbs, linen coat hardies and these little you can barely see them. They're, they're super cool. They're these little sleeve covers and they're all embroidered with blue Tudor roses. They're super cute. Wow. Yeah. That was a lot of fun to make those because they're like small accessory things. I love accessories. And so making small accessory things is just a lot of fun because it's this short project like hats where you make them in the two hours before your interview. <laughs> because <laughs> you can <laughs> um and then so remember how i said i really like to take a picture and then make the thing so this is uh duke jean paul and duchess jillian from Anse d'Aura. they are wonderfully delightful hilariously funny people um and jean paul said to me i want to be this guy and i said i'm your huckleberry i will make you that guy <laughs> Uh, and then Jillian was like, and I want to match. And I said, okay. So I took their measurements at Gulf Wars, um, which was, I want to say it was like right after they had won crown. So they were Prince and Princess of Anstora. And then sewed, sewed, sewed from March to August and put these suckers together and then did a final fitting at Penzik and then did like last minute hand sewy, making sure it fits stuff like in camp at Penzik. And wow. then they wore them to their kingdom court that day at Penzik. And they just, they turned out so well. And, and Jean-Paul just has that, that happy grin all the time. So it was, it's just wonderful to see um, how much they just loved these outfits. It was super cool. Um, and then Mari and Brock, we did a lot of matchy matchy. Um, and in these outfits in particular, there's a lot of matching of the themes because when you're doing these party colors or quarter colored things, like it, it has to be like every, every square has to be perfect. I learned so much making these <laughs> outfits on just how to make that, like when you're sewing things inside out and then you got to turn them right side out and you're like, why do these not match? Um, I learned tons on how to make those things match. Uh, thank you, Mari. She's, she patiently walk, walked me through that process. Um, Our uh, kingdom devices, uh, golden, it's but the checky. same, it's checky. And so yeah. I uh, am gotten very good at matching those little corners. I, I bet, yeah, <laughs> like it's Sanagua, we're lucky. It's like one big check. <laughs> I, I look at Anne Tier stuff perfect. and I'm like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> That's too checky, too checky. Very cool. Um, and I love, I love making matchy matchy outfits for crowns. Um, these are two very dear friends of mine. Um, this is uh, Countess Michelle from Anstiora and then uh, Duke Lachlan, also from Anstiora. He had one crown for her. Um, while her husband was a uh, society Earl Marshal. So they, they reign together. And this smile on Michelle's face is literally always there. She is a delight. Um, but she had sent me this, this crazy image of this lady being attacked by sperm from the sky. And I was like, I'll make you that dress. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you know, Lachlan had picked this one out from the uh, Triumph of Maximilian. Um, and again, it's, it's those, here's the picture. I want you to make me to look like the guy in the picture. And so, you know, given the fabrics and the constraints and all that other stuff, that's, that is one of my favorite things to do is to make those things happen. 
uh, <laughs> I had to show a picture of the inside of Lachlan's sleeve because the first time he took this sleeve off, he um, like grabbed the wrist and just pulled. And so the, this is a, a 360 degree basket weave. There's no seam holding these things together. They're just basket woven in and attached at the top and the bottom. Um, so he Chinese finger trapped himself <laughs> in this outfit. And so I, I get this message like, what the hell have you done to me? <laughs> and he goes, and once I finally got out of it, then I had to figure out how to turn it right side out again. <laughs> and I said, yes, you've discovered my crazy plan. <laughs> and now you will take your clothes off carefully. <laughs> yes, and now you will be more careful. But yeah, there were the Chinese finger trap sleeves. Um, but I, I have this thing for basket weaving. I love that. I love it. I, I love how it looks. Um, my laurel dress uh, has a band of basket woven trim around the forearm um, and just super, super cool stuff. Yay, more Germans. Again, here's a picture and then you make the dress. This one, I wish, uh, this is uh, Duchess Facebook has killed me, April Edwards, uh, Duke Guillaume's wife. Felina, maybe, um, from Kaid. We had met them, we had done some, um, it's the strangest, most bizarre thing, site security work for the International Joust Competition. So SCA friends, you know, but we're there wearing basically tactical gear. <laughs> <laughs> this, this weird like semi renaissance fair looking at anyways um we had run into them and got to geeking and and uh duke guillaume got a hold of me and he said you know hey i'd really like for you to make a dress for my wife for christmas and oh. so um i gave him a, a bunch of options and he goes well you know given all the choices i will always take whole bean um so I made this this dress for her and it it looks so perfect on her and I just I love it the the forearms on that dress um it's not cut work those are all individual strips that are sewn in places and then not sewn in other places so it does that sort of that mm -hmm. basket look um it's the dress turned out just just beautifully um and then the, the weird, crazy, um, like curvy looking uh, banding on the skirt at the very bottom on the guard of the skirt. I actually made a bunch of just curved strips mm -hmm. and then wove them into place and then stitched them down like that. So all of those pieces are individual and I don't have a full length picture because once again, I suck at taking pictures of garb that I made. So I have to rely on other people. Um, but it, it turned out really well. I really liked how that one turned out. Um, Mr. Man, this is my husband fighting, looks like Gulf Wars. I just love this picture. Um, that, it was so funny when I first made that Waffenrock and that whole thing's got embroidered uh, crossy flurries all the way around the hem. And that's like maybe a six or seven foot hem. He was like, are you insane? You want me to wear this on the battlefield? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and you're gonna look fabulous. And he does, you know, cause Germans on the battlefield always look fabulous. So that's how it is. Something about the way those skirts swing. It's just I, exactly, right? Man skirts, it's where it's at. Love them. Yeah. Uh, and then when Anton and Helga reigned in the mists, um, he said, hey, can you make me some top stuff? And I was like, absolutely, brother. Um, so I made him some cute, I love basket weaving again, made a basket woven sleeve for one. And then the other one was like some weird strippy things, but I love basket weaving. So I was like, I'll make that for you. You're going to wear it. You're going to like it. And he's just like, yeah, I really do. The sleeves are cool. Um, so yeah, that, that turned out really well. And then it made the, the sort of over, over wombs for him also. And again, terrible photos. And Helga, my little sister, she's awesome. Again, basket weaving on the sleeves, like loose basket weaving up on the shoulder and then down in the forearms, that's all leather basket woven together. Um, I don't know if, if you've heard the story of their step down, but she wore dresses the whole reign. And so she was like, hey, 
can you do a thing for me? I was like, yeah, what thing? Of course, you know, without even asking, like, what do you want me to do? I was like, absolutely. What are we doing? She goes, make me a German dress, but can you like put stripper snaps on the skirt so I can just tear it off at the end of my, <laughs> my court? I was like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, so the plan was that she was going to, you know, do her final court and the dress and everything. Cause she had promised Anton, Hey, you win, you win coronet for me. I'll wear dresses the whole reign. And she did. And so as soon as they coronets on the next guy, she just takes that skirt, does the magic mic routine, has the, the leather pants on underneath it and just struts on out of court it was so perfect it was the most Helga thing it was fabulous um, but while she was in the dress she also looked wonderful it's a great way to kind of reclaim yourself when you step down yeah yeah it was it was a very Helga thing to do it was a lot of fun um I think everybody really enjoyed it it was good theater because we like good theater thank you great with the touchy um, I also do make boy clothes. Yay, boy clothes. Um, ignore the roughen head over, uh, that's uh, Sir Ace of Hearts. Yes, Ace of Hearts, but it's Ace of Hearts. Uh, he is a good friend of mine from Amstora. That is um, the Waffen Rock I made for him. Uh, oh, I had a meme that I was gonna share. Uh, there was a, a Comet of the 30 that happened um, at Gulf Wars, and they call it the deed of arms at Gulf Wars. It's a 14th century battle. And my husband was fighting in it. And, you know, when you capture somebody, you do a ransom. And so I decided, I'm like, you know what? I, I love everybody who's fighting in this entire battle. I know all these people. I'll make a, a outfit, you know, to whatever they want if you capture the husband. And because that's going to happen. I'm like, I will commit to this. No problem. And uh, <laughs> he had gotten captured by um, Sir John of Severn from Monstera, who then just handed him to, I, I don't think it was Ace, but he had handed him to somebody who had already made a Waffenrock for, right? And so, you know, that person's like, hey, I got a ransom and brings him over to me, right? And I was like, I've already made you a German, but I'll make you another one because that's the deal, right? And John of Severn, there's this meme of him on his knees wailing and stabbing himself with a, an SCA dagger. And the, you know, the caption is, you know, when you find out that, you know, the, the ransom you voluntarily gave up was a, a new Brecky Waffenrock. I was like, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of Brecky Waffenrocks running around Anstura. Hi. Good folks, good folks all. Um, just good stuff. I just love, I love making stuff and making the pictures look like the thing. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, you, you make those 285 piece sleeves and then you're like, okay, ratchet it back, ratchet it back. So I'm working on right now, sort of the, the simpler concepts, um, working on patterning. Uh, the, the blue velvet here was, um, I had done a proof of concept. Uh, Mari years ago had patterned me with duct tape and did half in like a, a multi-panel uh, uh, Code Hardy type concept. And then the other half, she's like, well, what do you want? I was like, well, let me, let me, let me work on one of those crazy curved back seam Italian looking things. And she goes, I can do that for you. So she draws that out and I rolled it up and I set it aside for like six years. Wow. And so I get announced for the Pelican and I'm like, well, you know, I, it's a Pelican. I'm, I'm already up here. So let me, uh, I got this blue velvet hanging around. Let me, let me look at this and let me, let me try out this pattern. And so I, you know, in, a month again, cause I'm crazy. I proof of concept and patterned out this and made this dress for my, now my Pelican vigil um, and absolutely love it. Because, you know, if you're gonna try a pattern for the very first time, of course you're gonna use the Velveteen, <laughs> of course. Um, 
And then the other one, the, the blue linen, um, and for all you naysayers out in the world who say, oh my God, German should never be linen. Huh. It's fine, you know, prove to me that they didn't make linen dresses. There's some amazing etchings out there of women wearing the, the full count frau, truss frau, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, the, the, the pleats and everything, and you can see the weave and you're like, ah, that's linen, it's gotta be linen, whatever. It's a fun fabric to work with. You know, I made this for Mari's Nighting when I came out for that. Um, I had like 30 days. And so I'm like, I'll make two dresses. <laughs> yeah, I sew really, really fast. Um, and I absolutely love this dress. Uh, and I think that picture was at West Antier. So like one picture's at Great Western War and then the next one's at West Antier. I love wars, they're so much fun, such a hoot. I also love collaboration projects. Um, this one is um, Countess Addison, Duchess Addison. I don't remember what she is now. I think she's Countess. Um, she had decided she wanted a snow white dress, beautiful, fabulous mm -hmm. Germans. And she wanted that, that high collar that I absolutely love. Um, so uh, she had gotten this crazy bright purple painted velvet at Mood, right? And I'm like, man, this stuff is cool looking and crazy and fabulous for Germans. Let's do this, right? Painted velvet isn't square. It's like the pattern sort of drifts a little bit which when you're doing Germans and you want everything to be really sort of pattern precise, it, it makes it really challenging. Uh, so that was a hoot. Um, but I don't do embroidery really well and I don't do beading at all. Um, but my sister Anya does and she's amazing. So I you know, started up a Bruce Fleck, which is the breast band handed that off to her and I said make it awesome she goes how do you what do you mean I'm like it's Germans more is more do the thing um and she's amazing at that and anytime I hand her a project I'm like I want you to do the thing and it's really amazing she will blow me out of the water a hundred percent of the time she's so artistically talented and she's probably over at her house up in uh Paradise Chico area going you're lying I'm not, she's amazing, she's awesome. If you want pottery or embroidery, she's your huckleberry. She's an amazing person. Um, so Anya, suck it up. I love you, you're amazing. The colors <laughs> on her are just, I mean, that is such a beautiful shot. Yeah, Wow. Yeah, exactly. She's, and she's, Addie is super, super photogenic and a beautiful human being also. So it's, it's fun to make cool clothes for, for people who really appreciate it. Um, wow. this is, yeah, this is Viscountess Assault. Um, again, those, those tall, lanky, elegant human beings who can wear that, that high collar Saxon and just rock it. Um, and this one, the Bruce Fleck was actually a collaboration with, uh, Duchess Berengaria out of the Outlands. Um, she does that really cool puffed leather embroidery, um, wow. Yeah, and so she had made this double swan Bruce Fleck. Um, and I decided I need to make these sleeves. So we got together and made this dress for uh, Dutch or Viscountess Assault. And as with all things, Assault just knocked it out of the park and, and took what we made as a creation and just gave it life and made it so beautiful. It's just stunning. Yeah, yeah. And then there's Roger and Zenobia. This was at the that crazy West Kingdom Twelfth Night over in Reno, where everybody got snowed in. Uh -huh. um, and again, I take I I don't take photos, but the the pants that Roger has on underneath that Waffen Rock are super cool because like one whole leg is is circle basket woven. So it's wow. again with the Chinese finger trap clothing, um, and then his sleeves are all basket woven. It's super really awesome. Um, but yeah, she had, at, I want to say at a crown or a coronation or maybe a Sanaguan event, she had pulled me over to her trunk and she was like, pick anything from in here, but 
really, I really want you to make it with this. And then she hands me this little piece of jewelry and she says, and this needs to be integrated into it somehow. And it's that little daisy that's on her Bruce Fleck. Oh, um, cool. And I was like, all right, I can do that. <laughs> um, so made them these, these amazing Germans. And um, apparently that 12th night was the, the 12th night where they had the, the meeting where they decided they were gonna laurel me. Um, didn't tell me for another three months, but she told me <laughs> later, she was like, that was when he had the meeting. It was so much fun. Oh. Yeah, it was very cool. Awesome. Make with. Oh, uh, this is uh, Duchess Larissa and Duke Duncan from Trimeris. Um, Larissa has been queen of four kingdoms. Uh, oh, Kaid, um, uh, starts with an A, big son next door to us. Aidenvelt. Aidenvelt. Um, Ansteora and Tremeris. And this was her first reign as a Tremerian queen. And she said, I want you to make me one of those cool Germans that you make, but I want it to be so Tremerian that nobody will have any doubt that I am the Tremerian queen. Oh, there are more than 200 Triscales on that dress. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, she's, she's like a Disney princess. She really is. Um, and she's, she has always been like this, this huge supporter of me. I don't know what I have done to make her love me so much, um, but she's amazing. Uh, Duke Duncan is amazing. I had made an outfit for him earlier. Um, he's, he's always just been a super sweet guy. And then there's Thorns F behind them. Those are some Germans I had made for their German reign. Um, again, linen, so much more comfortable in the blazing hot Penzik, yeah. where all the pictures are kind of foggy looking because there's so much humidity in the air that it actually shows up in photographs. Penzik's crazy and awesome all at the same time. I do not do well in that kind of humidity <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, humidity is a thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love making rose dresses, rose coat hardies. They make me so happy. Like the bigger, the crazier the rose I can put on your skirt, the, the happier I am. Those are magnificent. Um, yeah. So that's Zeph's rose coat hardy. Um, she was like, I want you to make me one. It'd be crazy. Uh, and that is 100% her personality. Um, and then I've made one for uh, Duchess Arianwin in the, in the middle picture. I've made one for her, but all I have is a picture of the flower. I don't think I have one of the full dress. Um, but that is a dress that I made for her um, when she and Kith stepped up as Prince and Princess of Sanagua. Oh. Yeah, and, and it just turned out really well. Um, she was so funny. She's, she's had some shoulder surgeries. And so she said, you know, that's the first code RD I've ever had where my shoulder didn't hurt. I'm like, oh, I have no idea what I did, but cool. Wow. That's <laughs> um, really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then there's me and the husband, um, I don't know, this is a crown tourney or a Sanaguan cornet or something. Um, I had uh, tried an entirely different concept of Cotardies and for some reason it turned out really well. So I'm like, yay, I look cute. <laughs> I'm going to add that picture. Um, and, and then, so uh, one of my very dearest friends um, that I had known from when I had started playing in the SCA in Tremeris, uh, Earl, um, Facebook has killed me, uh, Earl Bennon. Um, he is also known as the SCA t-shirt guy. Okay, so Renaissance Arts and Design. Um, he, uh, he spoke at my laureling, you know, just absolutely one of those people I had always looked up to. He was the first triple peer I ever met. So he was just like always, oh, but it's the man. Um, plus he is an amazing human being with a great sense of humor, um, a, a fabulous inspiration to so many people. And he came up to me or I came up to him. I don't remember we were at Gulf Wars and he says to me, hey, you know those pinup shirts that I have? I kind of want to do better ones, like really period. And I was like, 
that's super cool. That's a really good idea. Yeah, you should do that. And he goes, so will you be my German pinup girl? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes, really, really, period. I was like, I'm your girl. And so literally before I had even gotten on the plane home for golf wars, I'm like, oh, I got to do all the things and I want to do those little booties. <laughs> and so, um, I, you know, you see all these woodcuts of these German ladies following the men to battle and walking and walking and walking. Well, let me tell you, wool line or wool booties with little linen liners um, will make your feet so wonderfully comfortable and they're super warm um, and I love them. And this was my proof of concept pair and I should probably make more. <laughs> but that was like the one thing that I really, really wanted to add to this, you know, German pinup that he wanted to do. And I was like, all right, so I did these done. And then I was like, all right, we'll take pictures and we'll do the German pinup thing. Um, and so uh, we did. And so this is the German pinup that we did. <laughs> um, you know, the, the original concept was, uh, we had a couple of ideas we were gonna do. And one of them was like the girl riding the bomb. Um, and it was gonna be the girl riding the cannon. Uh, and then this was the other one. And it was like the, the spear had caught the skirt, but then we decided we're just gonna hold it instead. And that turned out really well, but that was the dress that I used for that, which is actually that dress right there. Right. Um, so it, all you folks out there wearing the German pinup t-shirt from Renaissance Arts, that's me. <laughs> that, was, that was my super fun project, my, my crazy, crazy project that we did. Um, yeah, good stuff. And then my friend Zeph came out to Great Western War. Um, literally, this is the only photo I have of this dress that she wears. Mm. It is a coat hardy with this huge skirt and the, the, the gray silk that you see on there is an octopus that starts sort of up under her rib cage and covers the whole skirt. Wow. And that's all silk applique on there. I really need to get better at taking pictures of garb because it's a truly astounding, astounding <laughs> octopus on there um and that's that's her device so is that is that machine sewn down or hand sewn down that is machine sewn down because that is an octopus bigger than me well um, and silk i gravels uh, like a yeah it does yes silk <laughs> is like, a pain I you not hand sewn that <laughs> no hand sewn the, some of the things that that you know you're like oh man i gotta hand sew this otherwise it's just not going to be right giant appliques on coat hardies man machine sewn that sucker because yeah. ain't nobody got time for that no <laughs> you know <laughs> but it, and it turned out so well and it looks just absolutely great um yeah Very she's cool. super super wonderful Very cool. um so we gosh this is back in Tremaris. we had done this crazy thing i have a friend who is a rock star um and he also plays SCA. And so he was like, I want to get all my friends in the SCA together and we need to do a music video for one of my songs. And we're the SCA. So of course we're like, yeah, let's do that thing. <laughs> so we took over a friend of ours horse pasture, set up every period pavilion we could get our hands on and took a whole day and I like brought every piece of garb I had for the folks who didn't have because we want to try to keep sort of that 14th century vibe going mm -hmm. um and so I brought all the all the 14th century garb I could get my hands on we had horses we had armor um absolutely crazy it was super cool if you guys uh want to go see the video it's um JP Corwin it's a video called I Will Wait um, it's a hoot. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Trimarian folks in there. We had a great time. It was about 150,000 degrees out there. It was summertime in Florida. Um, this was at sort of the end of the day and we were just all fragged and it was sort of like the concert scene. Um, but we, we really had a good time. It was a lot of fun, everybody getting together. Um, this was me and Zeph in the middle of the day. 
uh, we had this scene where we were going to try and sell somebody some uh, some pottery. <laughs> it was so hot. We were all just like, it is time to have fun and get some air moving. So we were just, <laughs> it was one of those like borderline SCA because everyone's wearing all their SCA gear. But at the same time, we were like, it's a rock video. This is awesome. This is so much fun. Um, so we just we just hammed it up and had an absolutely wonderful time. But this right here, this is the relationship between me and Zephyrine in a <laughs> nutshell. Um, one of my BFFs, uh, if we can ever get a Gulf Wars again, um, my, my original Laurel, Barbara, and I are going to take her as a co-apprentice um, between the two of us. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, she is really, really interesting art, um, salt making. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, really cool stuff that she's she's really going whole hog on that one. Uh, Hansa, yay. I made a, a WAMS for him for his uh, coronation. Um, we were going to do this sort of crazy, uh, the, the letter galler, the weird looking cut worky one. Um, but neither of us liked how it turned out in the leather that we had. So we were like, let's just stick with the Unterwams. It looks really good. Um, all the little ties and the cut work in there, it turned out really cool. Um, and, you know, you could literally wrap Hansa in a plastic bag and he would look spectacular. So, you know, the, the boy cannot look bad in anything at all. Um, even the goofy hat, he requested this really specific hat because, you know, the Western crowns are what they are. They're Right. solid silver you know torture machines and he's like it's got to be padded in a specific way I was like oh, I got you um and he of course makes it look amazing because it's Hansa because he looks good <laughs> yeah exactly um and then Helga had come over one weekend and we were just hanging out in the the sewing studio and she's like I I, I want to do something really demi fun like on a galler and so we, in like a single day with a bunch of text messages and, and like back and forth photos for actual period examples of a demi-sun galler uh, that our friend, um, Mistress Urzabetha found for us uh, and just texted us like, oh, you mean like this? We're like, yeah, how do you do that? That was perfect. It's exactly what we're looking for. Um, so we made these. Demi Sun Gollers. Um, hers was wool. Mine was the uh, the damas scholar with the damask and then the silk over it. Hers was wool on wool, wow. um, and they turned out really, really well. Uh, I love mine so much. It was like this was the funnest weekend, and we made this perfectly period thing that is so West Kingdom awesome. Yeah, really. Um, so I I love mine. I I wear it all the time inappropriately sometimes. So it's it's just a cool thing. <laughs> like I'm wearing 14th century French. Damas Galler needs to go with this too. It really doesn't. I I need to behave myself. You know, don't cross the streams. Sometimes um, do though. Oh, these are so cool. Right? Yeah. Um. And then so I I I love this. This woodcut, the, this is Melancholia one by uh, Albert Durer. And I've always loved it. Um, and I have this thing for these pouches with little pouchlets on it. And she's got this spectacular one that's like down by her feet over there. And they're these wonderful purses and they hang on these really long strings. Um, and you might think that's a pain in the keister, but if you got it right on the side of your hip, it doesn't swing at all when you're walking. So it, it's actually a really cool concept. Um, wow. And I was having trouble working it out and having trouble working it out. And um, I, I was probably complaining to Mari because that's what I do when I have trouble working stuff out. And she said, well, I got this friend down here in Locock who's working on the same thing right now. And I think she's got it figured out. Why don't you talk to her? And so she got me hooked up with Mistress Ursula out of Locock and who gave me like a gazillion ideas. And so I got it figured out. Um, thanks to Mistress Ursula, who also had it figured out and we were just able to geek together and figure this stuff out. Um, so I made a whole bunch of those and like sold some at Great Western War. And it's one of those really cool projects that you can be like, hey, I have a handful of leather and nothing better to do for two days. So I'll stitch one of these things together. Um, they work really well, you know? And there's such a perfect little German accessory 
that they're really fun to make and really fun to have. Uh, you can like personalize them and make little buttons that look cool. And it's just one of those little fiddly projects that it's a lot of fun to, to work on. And those little tiny details really make, make outfits. They absolutely do. Um, I've, I've always been a big proponent of accessories because it's like that, that head to toe look that really does make the outfit. You know, if you've got the right accessories, you've got the right footwear, you've got the right headgear for the outfit that you're doing, you take a really good look and make it an excellent look. Yeah. And I, I, I love those, those little over the top steps, that, that little extra bit. Um, so Helga loves to fight and Helga loves to fight in uh, these sort of like Boxton-esque tunics. I have lost count of the number of Boxton tunics I have made for the Helga. And, <laughs> and she understands that they're disposable, but I think it still like hurts her soul when they die. Uh -huh. And I'm like, it, it takes me a week to make them. Just, do you need another one? Cause poof, there you go. <laughs> um, but I've made a couple for, uh, for her reigns and um, they look fantastic. I love working with with Helga for for garb because she's one of those people that when you make her something, she is so truly appreciative. You know, she she understands that gift giving is love, yeah. and and it's a message of love and it's a display of love. She she gets that, um, which is it's awesome. It's an awesome thing to have in a human being, especially when they're family. So it makes makes everything cool. Nice. Um, and so at one point she had talked, um, now Mistress Elizabeth, she's still queen, maybe? I don't know. Um, in, forgot the name of the kingdom again, son. Invelt. Invelt, thank you. Yes. Yes, she's Normally still I'm queen. not bad at kingdom names, but for some reason, Aidenveld is just not staying in my brain today. Um, she is she, forever queen. They are still on the throne. Yeah, Amazing. she's her and Vera, and there's a couple other, and they're like, no, oh, I'm queen forever. That's cool, because you're good at it. Do the thing. Um, she had made 10 yards of this heavyweight black linen stamped with these patterns for Helga. And so Helga does what she does. She gets this fabric, which is beautiful. I mean, stunning fabric. And she hands it to me and says, make me a tunic. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. All right, here you go. <laughs> so I make her a tunic out of this, this, this. So it's fully stamped and beautiful. And I did all the pattern matching and everything. It's really cool. And there was 10 yards of the fabric. And Helga's like, cool, thanks. The rest is yours. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I love you, little sister. There were 10 yards of fabric. It takes like four if you're pattern matching to make a Boxton for you. And that's if you're pattern matching. And I was pretty careful. And so I was able to make her two additional tunics and then cut out medallions and make um, just by uh, stitching down the medallions, make a matching set sort of like this for me and my husband. Right. Um, so we all could, you know, the three of us could go wandering around and be like, gosh, they all look like they're dressed alike. Well, it's <laughs> we are. it all came out of the same fabric. Um, wrap family clothing. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Um, but yeah, Helga has gone through like three of these tunics now just because she's, she, she's a fighty fight girl. That's how she is. Um, but yeah, and this, it, it's so beautiful. And, and Elizabeth did such a beautiful job on this fabric. It's it's a joy every time I wear it because you know I could feel like oh, Elizabeth made this, isn't it cool? <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. I love collaboration projects, and that was one of them. It's one of the really. It's funny people who make a lot of really not nice things for other people. We don't get things made for us very often. Oh my God! Right? Because people get intimidated, or they think that they and and it's like you know what? I get things made for me so rarely that yeah. I don't care what it looks like right it's a gift and it's made with love and I'm gonna cherish the shit out of it so the the first time Mari had had come to Gulf Wars as queen 
uh, nobody had told me that this, this was a thing, right? Nobody told me that people don't make clothes for her. And so, you know, this is me. I don't know anything from anything. She's just Mari, this cool chick that I met and she does cool things and oh my gosh, she's queen now. Yay. Iron make her dress, right? So I get her measurements and I make her a dress and I didn't tell her that's what I was doing. You know, I was just like, Hey, you know, I just want to do a thing. Give, give me your measurements. She's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. And so she shows up at Gulf Wars and because I show up early and everything, I, I had gotten their cabin all ready for them and had put like a gift basket out there and all that other stuff. I'm like, yeah, my friend's queen, woo. Um, and so I laid this dress out and it's a blue coat hardy and it's got uh, her little uh, four panel doohickey on it. And, you know, she comes back over to Trimeris that night wearing the dress and she goes, nobody has ever sewn for me before oh. and I'm like are you kidding me right now she goes yeah you're the first person who has ever just made me something and oh. it was just that she's like I think everyone's intimidated you know I think they're they're just terrified to make me something because I'm gonna judge it I'm like judge away I'm like I made this thing for you <laughs> it looks cool <laughs> um, I don't care judge it that's cool um but i i love collaboration projects um and these are two of them um and these are all pelican things ha huh, look at how that worked um so it's helga's pelican coat um which i had made the the applique concept of the wool on wool um and then handed it over to anya who did all of the embroidery outlining and um, the gold work and the, I think there's like an emerald eye on the pelican and everything. Um, and some genius got Helga's face that she turned around and looked at it, which was awesome. So I will forever embarrass Helga with the dark face. <laughs> um, and then my friend Doe uh, from Antier had gotten uh, her pelican at 50 year. And so she said, hey, could you make me an outfit? Cause I don't wear fancy clothes. I said, well, you're being made a pelican. You should get fancy stuff. Uh, so I made her this, uh, the full cloak with this huge wool applique pelican on the back. Um, and this is her getting that on at 50 year, which was super cool. And that's my Laurel being the Herald. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Um, and then, um, while my sister Anya, um, after they lost their house in the Paradise Fire, she and her husband, um, which happened like two days after they moved in, uh, moved in with us because they had no other place to go. And they were like, we're escaping. I was like, I have a guest room. Come on. Um, during all of that chaos, my husband had been announced for Pelican, um, which was crazy and involved like offering Connor a French fry. It's very strange. <laughs> Connor comes up behind the husband who's eating French fries at the hotel bar because it's 12th night and that's what you do. And he doesn't realize that all the pelicans are with him and like hurls a French fry over his shoulders like, hey, your majesty, you want a French fry? And Connor's like, you should stand up and turn around. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, so uh, while they're living in our house, okay, and so we've got four adults and a gazillion animals because they had brought their pets with them and we have our cats and everything in this house. We managed to keep secret from my husband all of his pelican projects. Wow. And this is one of them. Uh, Anya had done this black on black pelican uh, embroidery and then I put it on the, the, um, the hood. Uh, and he, he never saw it even, she's literally embroidering in the same room with him and he never noticed, it was great. Awesome. It's one of those fabulous surprise presents. Um, and then he had gotten that. And then my friend, Richard the Wolf. So in the Western kingdoms, you've got like the Queen's Guard and they do all of the heavy lifting things. Often they'll be setting up the pavilions and stuff like that for the crown. They don't have those things out east. In Trimeris, we had Richard. He was like a one-man Queen's Guard. He would 
organize everything and get everything done. Um, the king that just stepped down in Trimeris, uh, King Kern, uh, Richard the Wolf is his squire. Uh, absolutely amazing human. And when he was Pelican, he was like, can you make me a thing? But it can't be a normal thing. I want like a Richard thing. <laughs> and so, you know, made him one of those big sleeve coat hardies and did the, the uh, silk applique on the, the sleeve for him. So, nice. yep. And it's a big footed pelican because the, he's the most stable human I know. So Richard's good people that I can. Um, and occasionally I do silk painting. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because I don't know, I find it easy because it's literally tracing and then filling stuff in. And I know all the silk painters out there are going to be like, oh, it's hard. It's so much work. It is. It's a lot of work. Um, and, and you've got to be careful because when you screw it up, it will stay screwed up forever. Yeah. Um, but like I did my Pelican banner, uh, I want to say over a week when my parents were here. And they were just dumbfounded by the whole process. They were like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Look at this. All of a sudden there's art. <laughs> Pat, pat, pat. Wow. Um, and then um, when our friend uh, Master Brock got his laurel for dance, um, oh, I had found nice. this, uh, this image of folks dancing and then I had made them, the, the, the characters were wearing masks, but I had changed the masks into um, like Ebony was the, um, uh, Duchess Ebony is the, unicorn and then the little fret work is um another friend and the rabbit is me because i had to put me in the banner and then the badger is brock uh, and then the the uh just the the dancing statement so i just nice. i liked it it was a lot of fun it was it was really cool taking something from um an illuminated manuscript and putting it into paint and then making it sort of personal and then the little lion leg for Mari because I had to oh cool <laughs> yeah it was a lot of fun and it's just it's neat little project things um and then for some cray cray reason Vera and and Uther decided to make me the Kingdom Hearts champion when, when we thought it was only going to be three months <laughs> So I'm still Kingdom Arts champion and I'm like the world's guiltiest arts champion in the world because uh, what is the, eh, you know, we're having some online stuff, but it's not really a lot of stuff. I'm one of those people who's really, really inspired by going to events and seeing the people and seeing the art and, and I'm, I'm tactile about those things. I, I want to touch all the fabrics. Um, and an amazing honor. You know, I've, I've only been in the West Kingdom since 2011 and they have really embraced me as, as one of their humans, which is such an honor. That's uh, 10 years now. 10 years is a long time. I, I, I stuck at time though. Like <laughs> time doesn't make any sense to me. So when, when people are like, oh my God, you've been here 10 years. I'm like, really? <laughs> Seems like didn't I just move out here? Like I'm still the new girl, you know? And I see, I, I don't know, it's time is a weird thing that I, I, I really, I don't understand it, but you know, I'll, I'll take it, whatever. So this, this was such an honor. And of course I'm the level of nerd where I get this beautiful cloak that is a legacy and it's been handed down to so many arts champions of the West. And I'm like, oh, the lining isn't sitting right. I should fix that. So yeah, I get, you know, do the whole thing, get a hold of regalia and be like, can I, can I laurel this? Can I, can I do a laurel thing here? And thankfully Ghislaine um, understands that sometimes the laurels have to be anal retentive about things. So like I went through and I literally redid the whole lining on the whole thing to make it so that it doesn't like bag funny because mm -hmm. wool and silk settle at different levels. Oh, really? I want to say this thing is 20 years old, if not older. Um, so now it's it's nice and happy and, and flat again. So 
but yeah, that was a, a huge honor to be given. Um, and my bike pocket. Sorry, I got a, I got a point on my bike pocket. I love it so much. It just makes me really happy because, you know, I was like, I could put the lower wreath right on there and be like, do it around. And God, I'm such a nerd. But yeah, I love that. <laughs> Cool. And it's one of those where everybody who sees it, who's a laurel, is like, "Oh, I should have thought of that." I'm like, <laughs> Don't copy it. You know, it's a cool thing. Do it. Do the thing. Make it happen. Make it happen. And then this is me and my nerdy family. This was at my husband's pelican, which is why he's wearing like seven pelican things. <laughs> um, and then so this outfit that I'm wearing is hilarious. I call this my gift norse, sort of like a gift horse. Um, everything, every piece of fabric, every bit of this, all of the beadwork, everything, everything was a gift. Separately. Um, that, that crazy stag and tree trim that's on the hem of my, um, over gown thing. I don't do Norse, by the way. So <laughs> I don't know the terms for everything. Um, that is from 1930s Germany. Uh, oh, wow. a, a mundane friend of mine gave that to me. Um, I, I would have to say almost 20 years ago. And it is just, it's like a, a little more than a yard, but it is this beautiful, it almost looks embroidered tapestry, just elegant stags. And every time somebody sees that, they're like, oh, where did you get that? Well, <laughs> Pretty sure the Nazis burned that building down. Oh, sorry. Um, but you know, like the 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 little hangers for my beads. So the the two pins. One was given to be my my mother, and then the other one was a present from Scotland from when a friend of mine visited, or vice versa. It could have been one was a gift, and then my mother got the other one in Scotland. Um, which is something my mother would do, but they're the same. They're the exact same little Triscaly looking Celtic things. Oh. Um, the little hangers are uh, when my friend Adina in Ansteora got her pelican, those were her, um, her hand me outs for her um, pelican vigil. Oh, cool. And funny story, I wasn't there. Uh, I was nowhere near it. It happened in Ansteora. And I was prepping the field at Gulf Wars. And uh, Adina does a lot of water bearing, um, uh, has run the water bears point there. I run the Marshalls point there. And those two places sit right next to each other. And I was doing something, prepping the field sort of in between the two areas. And this was well before war had started because um, the, the folks who run the place show up like a week early. And I look down on the ground, there's little silver things. I pick it up and I'm like, uh, huh, that looks really like a Viking hanger thing. It's got a giraffe on it. I bet you this is Adina's. And so I take a picture of it. I send it to Adina. I'm like, hey, is this your thing? She goes, holy crap, that's my thing. I said, yeah, I found it in the dirt by Marshall's Point, by Water Bear's Point at Gulf Wars. She goes, huh. You know, I have another one. I'll bring it to you. You'll have a match pair. Oh, <laughs> like, wow. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all, all the cool things. The, the front rectangular bit. Um, my sister Anya has done all of the embroidery on there. That's my tinner's hairs, which are the three rabbits, each sharing an ear with each other, with the other. Um, and then the laurel wreath around that, and she was still working on it when I had gotten announced for Pelican. So she just held on to it a little bit more. Out of the pelican. <laughs> Throw Pelican on there, it's all good. Yeah, I'll just throw this on top, it'll be fine. So um, yeah, your Pelican just, is, is mostly for marshalling stuff or? My Pelican is for marshalling stuff, yeah. Um, I, I have been running Marshall's Point in one way or another at Gulf Wars um, since, my child was an infant and I was looking for shade by the battlefield. Wow. And so the tent seemed mostly empty. I said, hey, do you mind me borrowing your shade? And the folks that were there were said, sure, you want something to do? <laughs> and I said, all right. 
Um, so my kid's 21 now. That was probably when he was one year old. So I'm going to say 20 years I've been working there. Nice. Every golf course, I, I show up early. We put the point together. We run the battles. We run all the martial it. We um, do everything we can to keep it sane um, and make the point of we're not here to bounce your armor. We're here to make sure that you are safe and that you get to fight this war. Yeah. Um, there had been a lot of uh, a lot of unhappy humans uh, around the Gulf Wars Marshall's Point, just because of people. I guess you you put them in a position of power, and sometimes they're like, "I have to do everything I can to make things miserable for people." Or whatever, I have power, therefore I'm going to use it. Um, and I'm like how can we fix this? How can we make this a better, more consistent, happier place for everyone? And just through always being there and, and being sort of the, the base of keeping things consistent and keeping that, that mentality going, um, we've improved Gulf Wars immensely. I want to say we bounced one kid last year and we got him on the field the next day. And it was, it was like, okay, kid, I don't know what you're doing here, but obviously nobody talked to you about how to be safe on the battlefield. And I don't know what the soup sandwich is that you're wearing, but let's help. Let's work on this, you know? Um, and it's made a huge difference. It's a much happier, happier world there now. It's such an important thing too. I mean, we yeah. want everyone's brains to be safe and we don't want people going to the hospital off the field. That's absolutely, you know? absolutely. You know, and and I'm I'm happiest when people leave Marshall's Point going, yeah, this was this was an okay experience. You know, and and we've done some some hard work in that area, and I I want to say that it's it's really helped, and it's we're we're working with the the marshals who run other wars we work pretty closely with the the society of earl marshall um right now my husband's the the society heavy weapons marshal so that helps also we'll be able to bring that consistency into um just you know showing up to marshall's point should never be a surprise for anybody right you know, you should be able to show up and be like yeah i checked this all last week everything's going right i know the rules because they're the rules that should be there. You know, nobody's playing Calvin ball right now. So let's, <laughs> no problem, let's go through and do the thing. You know, it really should just be a, hey, you know what you're doing. Let's just do a mental check to make sure you brought everything. It's war, stuff is crazy. Do that mental check with me. Okay, now we're on the field. You know, but so many people show up to the war and they're like, yeah, this, Cyber was fine last war. Well, when was last war? Uh, six months ago. Okay. Well, let's have a little closer check then, shall we? Yeah. It just it just depends, you know. We try to keep it cheerful, and the again with the point of if you've shown up to the war and you put your armor on, you're ninety nine percent of the way there. Now we're just here to make sure that you are safe enough that you don't hurt somebody else. And that if you do get hurt, you're aware that it was your own fault. Right. Right. Very cool. I want to say that's my last picture. Oh, it is. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I put the family up there for the last picture. Yay. So yeah, that little tiny kid in those early pictures, he is now taller than me and scruffy. And yeah, kids grow up. But they grow do. them up in SCA because it's a hoot. It's good for the kids. It's super crazy when they get taller than you. It's like, what's happening right now? <laughs> it is super crazy when they get taller than you. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's six foot four, and it's just like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to actually measure measure my kid, but you know, he'll come up and he'll put his his chin on the top of my head, and I'm like, really? You're awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for making me feel so short. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. It has been. Thank you. It's yeah, been a um, wonderful experience. Is there anything that you haven't talked about that you wanted to cover tonight? Um, 
I don't know. I'll probably think of like 70,000 different things <laughs> later. Um, but that, that was a pretty good, pretty good sort of run through the ages, you know? Yeah. 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 I feel like I have a good sense of, of what you're all about. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yep. I'm all about making things happy and easy and um, be before I got laureled, uh, you know, when I first moved out here, I was, I was in such a burned out place. Um, I was, you know, I was pretty miserable. Um, you know, I, I, I hadn't had a good arts experience, um, in my previous kingdoms for quite some time. Um, there was a lot of frustration. I, I had a lot of frustration. Um, and you know, I, I stepped back, um, had a lot of good conversations with some friends out here and, and sort of just took that, that step back and just said, you know, my, my whole purpose when I started making clothes and accessories and things like that was I wanted to make the picture prettier. Um, and then when I started sewing for the, the crowns and sewing for other people, I was like, I want to make the whole picture prettier. I want to make, you know, it's, my whole purpose is to just make the things pretty. I want to do the best I can to, to make people have that oh, reaction when they first see something. Like, that's the thing I want to do. That's the picture I want to look like. Um, and, and taking that time when I first moved out here uh, to step back and look back at what I, what I wanted out of my journey. Um, and it, it wasn't the accolade, wherever that is, it, it wasn't that it. And I had been told for so long that it was that, that I was like, no wonder I'm burned out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm striving for something that I'm not even sure I want right now. So let's, take that step back. Let's think about what we want to do. You know, and I took the time to perfect my craft, you know, up until I had moved out here, I was basically just mass producing stuff as fast as I could. And not really, not really looking at, you know, the, the craft so much and not really looking at the whole picture and looking at, you know, why did I want to make this look like this, you know, you know, what's this little tiny aspect of this type of outfit that I can really perfect. Um, I hadn't taken that time. I was just like, I have to get so much stuff done right now. Oh my God, right now. Um, that I, I sort of needed that move to another kingdom and get to know all the people all over again. I needed that sort of jar shake. Yeah. yeah and reset. Um, and I was able to just look at at what I wanted out of life and really strive to get that. And what that was, was I want to be happy with the things that I make. Um, and one of the, the pieces of, I won't even call it a piece of advice. One of the curses that Mari has given me is this very simple statement where, you know, you, you finish this project and, and you're like, ha, ah, I did the thing. And she goes, oh, are you happy with it? And you're like, uh, am, am I happy with it? What if I'm not happy with it? What could I have done better? Um, and the, the sort of corollary to that is, is it right? And if the answer is no, then you're not done with it, are you? So those two little statements, which seem like super harsh, but at the same time, they're only harsh because of how I took them. Um, and it's not Mari being harsh to me. It's, it's me looking at what I wanted out of each of those projects and, and having to take that step and having to say, do I want this thing to be done or do I want this thing to be right? Do I want this thing to be what I wanted when I started this project? And if the answer to any of those things is no, then you're taking stuff apart and you're working on it. You're making it right. You're making it to where you're happy with it. Um, one of those things 
is the dress that goes with this shirt. Um, I wore this shirt at my laurel vigil, okay? Completed at my laurel vigil. The dress that goes with it is an endless, constant, how do I make this thing perfect? It is this crazy, um, the, the term that most of the, the bloggers use for it is a house book dress. It's this crazy German thing with these really weird wide arm eyes with this, the, the pleating down the front um, and the pleating in the back. And it's a very strange dress it's put together very strange. I think there's patterns for it and they all act very weird together, but I, because I'm not a person who ever started with patterns for things, I've always developed my own patterns, basically going, here's what the picture is, now I'm gonna make the thing. I wanna do that for this dress. Um, and having the patterns for it, I think is actually setting me back. Um, and of course, setting all of those pleats, the dress that I have three quarters of the way done that I only have to do the sleeves on, the pleats aren't perfectly even. So you know where that is? That dress is in the corner thinking about what it has done wrong with its life until I'm ready to address it again. <laughs> um, so yes, it's those, those two little lines right there. They're a curse and they're, they're, they're a curse I have put upon myself. Mari just gave them voice. The set of dresses, same thing. There's an yeah. issue with the underdress in the back sleeve there's this weird pucker and I, I take it off and I look at it and it looks good and I put it on and it's, there's a weird thing. Mm -hmm. And I fixed it three times and it's still not fixed right. So it's, it's going to sit in the corner. Think there. about what you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have this, it's in a box in the corner and I, it's a clear box. So I like all the, the boxes of things in my sewing room are all clear. So I can, I sort of have a concept of what's in them. So nothing hides from me because if things hide from me, I'll never see them again and they won't exist. So I need them to be where I can see them so that I remember where I've gone wrong. Um, and this is one of those things that's sitting in this, I can see that beautiful moss green. Uh, it's this fabulous heavyweight linen. I love it. And I, I look at it and I'm oh, I hate you so much. And then I look at all of my, like, I've got the seam lines drawn onto these woodcuts on these photocopies of these woodcuts because I'm like, the back seams are really specific. And yeah, that's that right there. That's my rabbit hole. But I love the dress. I love the smocking and I love my dress, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I want the dress to wear with it. But in the meantime, this fabulous underwear. <laughs> you look good. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking this little trip, two and a half hour almost trip down. Oh, awesome. Thank, yeah. Thanks for inviting me. It's been super fun. Um, hi to all, all the, you know, however many folks are watching. Hopefully my, my Laurel got to watch. Uh, yep. Yep. Reminder, so. she, she said you're welcome for those two phrases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tomorrow, my sister and I are interviewing uh, Desi Anhara from Ontier. She's uh, oh, reigned a lot in Ontier, <laughs> early days. Um, and uh, I think her last reign was with Uther from the, the West. Cool. And um, she's a pelican and a uh, lion of Ontier. So that'll be super fun. Um, thank you again for tonight. It was super thank awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks everyone for watching and we'll say good night. Thank you, Facebook land. Good night.